This playthrough is rated M for Mature. I've got a phone number to call. It's 8675309. 8675309. Damn you, Tommy Toontone! Greetings and salutations, viewers. Well, we're back here with another episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. In the last episode, we headed back to the base and talked to everyone about their feelings about what happened to Monica. Some were, some were sad about it, some were neutral, and some were angry about it. Can we get them to work together to solve the mystery of what happened to Monica and what it was covering up? Well, we'll start it today as we're looking for a man called Green Winters. A weird name, I know. But anyway, let's answer this phone just because. Hello? It's an old, obsolete phone booth. It's ringing. Pick up the receiver. A monotone, pitch-adjusted voice begins speaking almost immediately. The showed libraries contract for this kiosk is no more. Blackwire is listed as a follow-up contact. This is our secured line to Kiaz. Please listen to the following instructions carefully if you are a supporter of our cause. Uh, who are the shock live writer? The Shock Knight Hiter is fighting for the freedom and liberty of information in Berlin. The F state manages many things, but information remains controlled. Corporations keep any information they can under lock and key, silencing dissent, silencing indiscretion, silencing the truth. Our goal is to liberate this information so that who wish to may access it, and so that the F state can regulate itself based on truth. We are simply a collective of like minded individuals working towards this cause. Continue listening. We have phone booths in strategic locations throughout the city. Within each one, you may find a request posted for specific information. If you can obtain a copy of this information, return here and submit it via the port below the receiver. We will verify the authenticity of the information remotely and post an undoctored copy of it onto the matrix ourselves. It is our stated goal for this information to remain free to all. However, you will be compensated for sought after information returned to this location. The line goes silent. Hmm. Well, that's not sketchy at all. Uh, I'll keep an eye on it, I guess. The, the line remains silent. Hang out the receiver. Hmm. Well, we'll look at that a little to later, but for now, let's uh, head on back to the... Let's head on to the cafe and get ourselves some soy cap. Oh, uh, the what the lady is uh, referencing in her BTL was the sound of music. I knew the Von, when they said Von Trapp, I was like, that peaked something in my memory, but at the time, I didn't immediately... Uh, respond to it, but yeah, it's the sound of music. But anyway, yeah, nothing down there. Oh, well, yeah, nothing down here. Just I'd show it off. So this is where we go when we go when we go to certain missions. We go through the rail line or whatever. So, all right. Well, anyway, let's get ourselves a soy calf because everything in the future has to be soy. Meat is a rare commodity, which is actually true. All right, into the calf we go. Cafe says of Ceziva. Whatever. Like I said, my German is very, very rusty. And my pronunciation is even worse. Yeah, let's take a look at this menu board. Special today is caramel soy calf. Ultag burakazik. Ultag burakazi. That's it. The man behind the counter looks right past you and the dog falling close behind. Dante, I'll fetch his water dish and perhaps a coffee for our friend here. Uh, yeah, we could buy a soy calf, but nah. Uh, Paul Amsel sends his regards. When he hears Amsel's names, the Turk's voice lowers and his accent becomes less exaggerated. His eyes take on an annoying look. Ah, very good. Please express to uh, Amsel my appreciation of his patronage. If he needs any more catering jobs seen to it in the future, I am always happy to provide. Uh, he says he's tell he tells me you're developing the menu for a friend of his, Herr Winters, I believe. I want to hear about it. Yes, yes, of course, oh wise one. Come, come, he, come. A young woman bustles in from the back room. Her gum chewing is loud enough to hear over the noise of the coffee grinders. Burakazi spits something out in a rapid-fire Turkish. As you wish, Uncle. I see to it right away. Kami offers you a shy grin, snaps her gum, and hurries back into the room that she came from. My girl Kami is arranging them to make contact with the chief as we speak. This will likely take some time. My chef is a busy man. While we wait, I wonder if we would be so kind as to run a small errand for me. A trifle, really. I hate to trouble you. I am a bear to ask even, but I would be most appreciative of your help. Uh, of course, uh, was the, of course, Herr Burak, uh, Burak Gazi. It's no trouble at all. Altug's voice lowers to nearly whisper. 
Aaron is simple, hardly worthy of you. I have installed a number of data tabs to Merlin's fiber optic network as part of my civic duty, you understand. These tabs provide free matrix access for all who live in the Cruz Bazaar. In order to maintain their, how do I say it, uh, their anonymity, each tab's protocol's buffers must be reset every few days. I simply wish for you to visit each data tab and reset it. That's it? No catch? There's no catch, I assure you. It is time-consuming and a bit tedious. Nothing more. Just reset the tabs and come back when you're finished. There should be three of them scattered around this neighborhood. The first one is just outside. Look for a metal box with yellow arrows painted atop it. By the time of your return, I should have the information here I'm so requested. All right. Time to distract ourselves. Oh, who's this guy? Uh, Jan Goldschmidt. Schmidt. Ah, my friend. The voice that comes out from the man in the chair is enormous as it is its owner. Reminds me of the guy from uh, Resident Evil 7. Uh, deep boomy roar, dripping with unrestrained mirth. A fine, a fine day for Zoygav, yes. It is certainly a beaut. From the back of the store, the voice of the shopkeep cuts you off. Don't mind the fool in the chair. He roars like a traumatized walrus, stewing all day in his own sweat. The man behind the bar glares at Goldschmidt, his upper lip curled in disgust. I tolerate him only because he takes a soy cap by the bucket. <laughs> also reminds me of, uh, uh, and now for something different, I think it was, or something like that. Or... I think it was snap for something different. Anyway, Goldschmidt responds with a rakish belly laughter. Apparently, he finds the shopkeeper's insults to be hilarious. Oh, dog mind void! You are good witted and sharp dunk as ever. I bow to. Uh, if you wouldn't mind. Once again, the shopkeeper cuts in. To bow to me, you would have to vacate your chair. The shopkeeper sh claps his hand together, clasping in front of his chest. I shall summon a deem a data my determined young men and ox to assist with the task. With luck, you will be on your feet by nightfall. Goldschmidt smiles at you, his eyes, small eyes glittering. Enough of this senseless bickering. You have approached me for a reason, yes. Tell me, what can John Goldsmith do for you? Uh, something bad is going to happen if he doesn't in stop interrupting me. <laughs> oh, don't mind, dear Alta. Yes, he is a peevish man, but his eye is not directed to you. Goldschmidt uh, grins up at you from his overstuffed chair. I have the distinct of being the sole target of Altog's rage and horizon. It is a badge that I wear in delight. Uh, delight in wearing. Uh, why do you put up with those insults? Don't you have any pride? I put up with the, them because they amuse me. The fact that they amuse me infuriates my dear friend Alto, who in turn hurls more insults. Goldschmidt raises his hoi calf latte and sal salute. And thus the cycle continues. It is two years now that I've been your customer. Yes, Alto. Two years of soy calf and a strained patient, yes. I am happy, and Alto makes money. An ideal business uh, relationship. That uh, sound, all sounds perfectly healthy. Take care, Jan. Goldschmidt gives you a deep nod, his jowls quivering. Until next time, my friend. Hmm. Oh, that was random. All right, anyway, let's go do these data taps as we set up for the next mission. All right, data tap number one. The data tap protocol buffer is now reset. No, I, didn't, no, I must have missed this guy when I walked around. Hello, David. A pair of round eyes peer up at you from under the hood of a grim, smeared winter coat. You recognize him as David, one of the Cruz and Bazaar street kids. If you had to guess, you'd place him in the mid-teens, so it's difficult to tell between the grime and acne marring his face. You've seen him following Monica around between runs, chasing her heels like a lost puppy. She always seemed to have a soft spot for the kid. Well, probably had the, you know, he's a teenager, so. Oh, uh, I'm trying to think of my voice to give him. Oh, oh, hey, Black Wire, have you seen Monica around? I've been looking all over for her. Um, uh, I'm afraid, uh, let's see. I have some bad news for you, kid. The kid blinks, a blank expression on his face. She's dead, isn't she? It was quick. She went peacefully. That's the most that any of us can hope for. Yeah, uh, look, I, I think I'm going to be alone right now. Yeah, so. We could have been mean and told him it was, like, horrific. And technically it was, because, you know, she spazzed out and everything like that, so. It's pretty intense. Okay, let's see. Nope, I don't know why I clicked on there in the first place. Let's take a look around town and see where the last... Probably should have grabbed that mission earlier just so we could run around town to talk to everyone. Oh, well. That's what I get for one to talk to everyone first. Anyway, let's go here to this cyber clinic. The data test protocol buffer is now reset. All right. Oh, by the way, uh, if, if for those who are achievement hunting, I believe you have to use... Uh, drugs like five times in combat to get an achievement so if you want to buy drugs from him get it out of the way you can to go to Zack or whatever but you have the whole game to do that so it's not a big deal 
All right, we set up all the data uh, protocols. As you were resetting the data tap, you notice that someone has duct taped a small homemade receiver to the system. An earplug dangles from the receiver. Put the earplug in here. Gross. The sound of heavy machinery makes it difficult to hear the words that are being spoken. After a moment, you find that you can make out two distinct voices, a nasal woman who sounds like a heavy smoker and a man who speaks in high-pitched, breathy tones. Just heard, Monica. Need to verify. Good for us. Continue listening. It sounds like it's a sound like a conveyor belt start, starting adds to the noise of machinery. You can't make out anything else until it comes to stop a minute later. Think our next step. Wait, is it ready to make a move yet? To be patient. See your steps up. Someone couldn't be someone more. Continue listening. The more conveyor belts start up. All you can hear is the sound of machinery. Listen. Uh, so, uh, some sort of motorized vehicle starts up, draining on anything else. Continue listening. A bell rings loudly again and again. It sounds like a telephone. You hear the sound of a door slamming shut, and the noise of machinery is suddenly muffled. There's a rattle of plastic, and the ringing stops. The nasal woman's voice can be heard again in a sing song tone. Good talk, how may I help you? Silence. Her tone changes, becoming more businesslike. I heard. Silence. Yes, he knows. I told him it wasn't time to make a move yet. Silence. What do you think I, what do you think I am, an idiot? Council needs to meet again. Silence. I know, getting everyone in the same room is challenging. Getting them to agree on a course of action is going to be even more challenging. From my perspective, the Cruise Bazaar is only stable because of her. If she really is out of the way, well, we'll see, won't we? Silence. Yeah, I know, I know. What can I say? Things go slow in the flux sometimes. You hear the sound of a door opening again, and the cacophony of machinery fills the line. Can't make anything more. Walk away. Hmm. Well, that's something, but that doesn't give us anything, really, when you think about it. We only have bits and pieces. Oh, well. Anyway, we set the data tap, so let's head back to uh, Herr Altug and uh, see what our next objective is. Maybe, perhaps he's got some information on Herr Winters. But yeah, it was just basically a mini distraction. Yeah, sorry. I'll, sometimes I'll try to zoom in just to make it more appealing for visually. The man behind the counter has the broad smile and open demeanor of a classic Tur Turkish street vendor. Welcome, on a defendant. Welcome, and how can Burkazi serve you ready? Would you like a cup of soy coffee, perhaps? Oh, you already said that before. I finished with your little trifle hair, Burkazi. Ah, very good. I assume you have no difficulties? Uh, no, difficulties, no. One of the taps had been modified a bit, though. Someone was using it as a surveillance device. He laughs. Of course they were. I wouldn't be surprised they weren't. This is Berlin, after all. In the flux, everyone spies. If you do not spy, how will you know who is in power and who will be in power next? If you are to stay here, Fende, you must get used to it. Who enters the Turkish path with sweat, as my uncle De Demo always says? Nevertheless, I shall have one of my people get into it. Wait, there's more. I listened in on the tap and heard something. It might be important. His eyes, he eyes you very closely, amused. Oh, tell me, oh, listener of Giles, what did you hear the surveillance tap you found? I couldn't make out much. A nasal woman and a high-pitched man. They seemed pleased Monica was out of the picture. The Turk's face, uh, face falls. News travels fast in Berlin. These two are known to me. Is there more? The woman got a call. She talked about a council meeting tonight to decide they should make a move. Then she was drowned out by heavy machinery. He nods grimly. Most excellent. It is indeed fortuitous that you discovered this information, though it is not unexpected. I will have one of my people attend this council meeting and report back. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Keep me in the loop. With that out of the way, let us return to our pressing business. He barks a stream of rapid-fire Turkish, and the gum-chewing young woman comes hurrying out to the counter. The menu for her, I'm so hungry. Kami, Kami hands you a folded piece of paper inside a memory stick. Please extend my con consolations to him. The death of Fra Schaefer must have hit him hard. Burkazi gives Kami a small nod as she hurries out to the room. When she is gone, he returns his attention to you. Please express my condolences as well. I only just heard the news. Monica was an important part of this community. He frowns. Few know how important. The memories to Kami just handed you should contain all the information I am so requires for our chief chef in the field. Should you require my services in the future, you know where to find me. Until then, good day. All right, let's head back to the base and uh, ter Am tell Amsel what uh, what's up. And let's see, I think we get like a uh, mission item. I think yeah, payday that payday from the last mission, and then the memory stick. So, all right, in we go, back to the safe house. 
Anyway, how's everyone doing in here? Everyone doing good? All right. I like how they have the, the Shadowrun like, music playing in the safe house, you know, from the previous game. Yeah, it looks like everyone's uh, meeting up together, so... you have any new dialogue before we talk to Amstel? Eh, uh, I've got nothing more to say, boss. Just, just get this van taken care of. You can hit me up again later if you want to talk. This isn't the best of times. Come back later if you want to talk. I guess they all say the same thing. Duck Raya, what do you need? Yeah, uh, never mind. I guess we'll... <laughs> I don't know why that doll is popping up. She's just supposed to, like... I'll talk to you later. Okay. Anyway, let's talk to Amsel. Blackwire. Amsel appears to you apprehensively. His eyes are bloodshot. Exper expression grim. Did you, get any, did you get any information about Green Winters? Yeah, I spoke to Altoog. He gave me the memory stick. Let's uh, see what his agent has to say. Amsel snatches the... Uh, <coughs> Amsel snatches the memory card from your hand and slots it into one of his computer terminals. He navigates a series of command line menus and a wall of amber text floods the screen. Amsel scans it, mouthing the words as his eyes flip back and forth. Uh, Burke, Gazi, Agent tailed wi Green Winters to a hotel in cesspool of Kias called Drogenkip. The hotel is called Das Kaiselhaus. It is a renovated victory uh, nestled deep in the heart of Dragonkip. It appears that Winters is old up there. Recently, there was some contention between two gangs over control of this neighborhood. Due to the gang violence, the agent refused to follow Winters inside of the hotel. Be confirmed that this is still inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Iger slings her rifle over his sh shoulder with a single spare motion. Gear up, people. We have a hotel to raid. Gloria and Dietrich pause, exchanging looks with Paul. Oops. <laughs> Couldn't hit the switch or something. <laughs> Just a moment, Iger. Amsel raises from his chair, drawing himself to full height. Even so, he has to crane his neck to look her in the eyes. You are an excellent soldier, and nobody questions your competence in the field. Your loyalty to this team is equally commendable. That said, we believe that Blackwire is the right choice to lead this team. There is a long pause before Iger speaks. When she does, her voice comes out dull and flat. But Don't mistake this decision for reprimand. Monica considered your contribution to the team to be invaluable. But we all know that she wasn't comfortable putting a soldier in charge. Iger speaks through clenched teeth. Her words are measured by expressions livid. This is unbelievable. You want to put the rookie in charge again? She shakes her head. Don't you people learn from your mistakes? Blackwire is the reason we're still alive, Iger. He kept us together. He led us out to the but there's one piece. Peace, I mean, sir. Making him your golden boy. She sounds tired, resigned, but above all, disappointed. This is more of your flux state idiocy at work, isn't it? Dietrich reaches out, puts his hand on her shoulder. It, it's what Monica believed in. Iger's voice tightens for a moment. She, her control slips and her face contorts in grief. Yeah, we'll cut that cut her. She strains to her full height. Let me give you a piece of advice. In the field, only two things matter. The vision, mission and survival. Everything else is a distraction. Your ridiculous politics have no place in the shadow run. Dietrich manages a smile. What can I say? We're German. We have a history of strong political views. Iger sighs. The tone of resignation returns to her voice. Screw it. Let's put an end to this. I've got the skills and experience to lead this team. Backfire, on the other hand, was disappointed by Monica as a joke. If you'd rather he take the lead, I'll abide by that. But I want to hear what each of you have to say. Uh. This is what we should be looking at. Let's see. Um. I'm no real quarrel with you, Iger. I'll do as the group wishes. You stay out of this. Uh, she stabs an armored finger into your chest. Hard. The moment she raises her hand to you, Dante's ears lay back and he lets out a low growl. Re reflexively, she takes a step back. I think we've heard what Dante has to say. As for my part, Mac Vice saved our lives back there. You may not believe it, but he did. The way I see it, that means I followed his lead a while longer. Glory voice, uncharacteristically gentle. I trust Monica's judgment, therefore I trust in Bakavaya's judgment. The discussion is finished, Iger. Amsel speaks softly, but his tone is firm. Blackwire will take Monica's place as the leader of this team. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> great. I like the joke option. Great. Hey, Iger, can you grab me a soy cap? Uh, uh, let's see. Um, I'll do whatever it takes to keep this team and Monica's legacy alive. That includes taking her advice, Iger. Iger gives you a small nod. That's big of you. She looks from Dietrich to Glory to Amsel, finally back down to Dante, then she says, I don't agree with this decision, but I will respect it. She nods again, more decisively this time. Back via takes the lead, then. Conversation closed. It's time to move on. We need to focus on chasing down Green Winters. 
Indeed, I have transferred the information that we received from Altug to the computer terminal in the next room. It used to be Monica's personal workstation, Blackwire. Now it's yours. Monica kept a variety of notes and dossiers on that machine. I would suggest reviewing her notes when we have the time. Hamsel turns his attention away from you and back to his computer screen. Good hunting. I'll eager await your return. I wouldn't suggest driving to a drag hip. The roads aren't safe. Taking the U-Bahn would be faster anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks for the tip, Iger. The U-Bahn is... Iger nods and turns to check her equipment. The rest of the group disperse in turn. You can now command a team of Shadowrunners. When traveling to new missions, locations will be able to be cho uh, able to choose which team members you'll take with you, modifying their loadout for the run. When members of your team become permanently incapacitated on mission, they'll be automatically extracted for emergency medical care. They'll be patched and ready for action the next time you return to your safe house. Avoid the loss of firepower by always carrying some extra Buma Na trauma kits onto the field. They can be purchased at the street docks office in the Kreisenberg. Yep. So if we want to do that so uh, let's see no you're repeating yourself i think we can avoid them for the purposes of uh i bet this is still gonna have our full dialog box yep all right anyway let's check the dossiers before we head out uh let's see your workstation and mission computer, the command center for your team's operations, your last link to the memory of Monica Schaefer. Her thoughts and words live on in the machine. At times, it's easy to forget that she's gone. The cool blue tones of the workstation's main menu fill the screen. A blinking message on the upper right corner notifies you of zero unread messages. Check your inbox. You have no notes. <laughs> uh, read your old messages. Uh, re hello ace. The screen flickers to life and Monica's face appears. Her hands are on her hips and she's wearing a wry smile. Hey Ace, I hear if you're reading this, it means that you've either died or stepped down. Hopefully the latter, but probably the former. Let me Shadowrunners make it to retirement age. In any case, I'm sure they'll do a fine job in the role. If you need anything, talk to Paul. He's a good man, and he knows how important it is to me that you take my place. One thing, Ace, Igar might cause you some problems. In fact, I think it's fair bet that she's already has. Just remember, she brings something on to the scene that nobody else does. You want her to be on your side. My advice to you is this. Hold your own with her. If she pushes you, push back. Don't try to butt her up with flattery. She sees right through it. Most of all, do what you can to earn her respect. She'll never be satisfied following you if you don't give her a better reason than because Monica said so. I have faith in you, Ace. It's up to you to justify that faith. She half turns away from the camera, then returns her attention to you. The image is uncannily lifelike. Oh, and by the way, Ace, if you botch this, I'm coming back and haunting your ass. I mean that. The message ends and the image fades. You find yourself back in your inbox. Uh, open the jobs directory. Uh, let's see. View all pending and active jobs. Yeah, just enter the query. Nothing really there. So view notes on completed jobs. Nothing. Yeah, it's, we'll go with this later. Access the Shadow BBS. Shadowlands connection established successful. Link strength 1000 or 1100. Spoofing one. Group info null and on. Welcome to Shadowland. Search the BSS for key relevant keywords. Uh, topics matching local network keywords. Key uh, killer in Seattle. Yeah, that's a reference to the first game. Anyone else reading about this? City's got a Lone Star contract. They can't catch this guy. This Emerald City Ripper has been on a spree, and so far no one has a clue. Pathetic if something like that happened on my block. Some vigilantes would have tracked him down and stopped him. Shows how good state payroll cops are. Uh, who says it's a he? They don't have any leads. Huh. I'll be in Seattle next week. FDW. Uh, any info you have about this Ripper? I'll see what's taking him, uh, take him out for a date with my Walter MA2100. I'm sure Lone Star will have a fat reward waiting for a blast this goon. No more posts. And who is Blutz? I think that's the name I'm still recovering. I think that's the name. I'm still recovering the logs. This hot shot, this hot dogger just trashed my land trid hosting server. Sounds like some kid pissed over his cartoons getting canceled. Left a bunch of garbage flies all over my desk. I'll be cleaning them up all day. They should make you pass a dumb, dumbass test before you're allowed to deck in in this town. Uh, step up your security. Write some white IC programs if you can. At least make the kid's hair stand on end for a few hours next time he tries it. Just make sure your IC is quick. Heavy hitting IC is no good if you can't catch up with an intruder. A fact that I take advantage of on a regular basis. Always running ACW? Like clockwork. If you two are finished, I did have IC on the thing. Tracking the hole down, grocery store across the street was piggybacking on my land and they left an unsecured jack port in the bathroom stall. Old as hell maintenance jack and a fuse box and my security ignored it. Mystery solved. Shadowland is in your personal tech support board, Lumens. Glad to see you fixed your own problem. Only way you're going to learn. No more posts. Let's see. Oh, and then we can post payday for sale that we got from the previous episode, or during the job. Uh, attach data to escrow account. Data will be automatically sold to the highest bidder. Both parties will remain anonymous throughout transaction. Post the antiquities delivery schedule. 
Posting successful. Posting will remain active for two days. Yeah, we don't get it immediately, so you just have to wait till later to come back and uh, see if someone takes the job or uh, takes the file and uh, buys it. All right, now we can look over our associates just to see a little bit more details about themselves. So let's see what it, she says about Amsel. The image of Monica appears on the screen. Paul, a talented, well-connected fixer with contacts all over Berlin. She pauses for a moment. He's more to me than that, of course, but that's neither here nor there. The image winks back off screen. You find yourself back in the menu. Hmm, I wonder what that meant. Oh, well, Dietrich. Dietrich, one of my dearest friends, and a shaman of tremendous power, a good man to have at your side in a fight. I tend to use Dietrich in a support role. His magic can dramatically bolster the combat effectiveness of a frontline fighter like Iger or Glory, but when the chips are down, he's more than capable of dishing out punishment on his own. It's basically the game telling you how to use him in, in combat. Can't think of much to say about Dietrich, just a good, reliable guy. She pauses for a moment. When she speaks again, you can hear a, glint, a hint of guilt in her voice. He's getting a little long in the tooth for a Shadowrunner. I'm not sure how many more years he has or has ahead of him in this game, but I'll be happy to run with him for as long as he's able. We'll see, I suppose. The image blinks off. Uh, Glory. Glory, our damage to Enigma. I've known her for almost five years now, but I don't think I'll ever really know her. Somehow I doubt that anyone will. On an operational level, Glory's solid. The crumb of hers may be old, but it gets the job done. I've seen her take a troll apart with her hand razors. <laughs> it does like five damage and bleeding. Come on. When her adrenaline punch is running, she moves faster than anyone I've ever seen. On top of all that, Glory's a competent field medic. I don't know where the, she learned medicine, yet another question mark, but she patched me up at least a dozen times. We learned her skill with a med kit and Diedrich's medic. We haven't had much trouble with serious injuries. In our line of work, that's a luxury. Monica pauses for a moment and shrugs. That's really all I know about Glory. She keeps to herself, barely talks, and spends most of her off time staring at nothing. I've seen this kind of behavior before, of course. Something bad happened in her past. Deep down, I think she's still running from it. I'm sure that her cyberware ties to it somehow. I don't know. Maybe one day she'll open up to me. I'd like to think she will. We'll see, I suppose. And you're dead, so yeah, that never happened. Monica, or, er, uh, never mind. Monica herself, I was going to go Iger, but I accidentally clicked on this one, so. Black Wire, my secret weapon. Uh, I've run enough with Blackwire to know that he's trustworthy. Good at a fight, too, but beyond all that, it's just good to see him again. There aren't many people left from the old days, far too few in Blackwire. She smiles. Well, he was always the best of them. She takes a deep breath and then shakes her head with a sigh. God, that was happy. Mental note, re-record this before Blackwire gets a chance to see it. At any rate, if anything happens to me, it's good to know that he'll be on hand to fill my shoes. It's not what Iger would want, but it's what would be best for the team. Uh, okay, then, uh, let's go with Iger. Iger. What's to say about Iger? She's smart, she's strong, and she's one hell of a soldier. In the close of fight, I've seen her take apart an entire security team with her shotgun. She's even more dangerous at range. It's a handy thing having a trained sniper on the team. All in all, we enjoy one hell of an adventure, thanks to her. Unfortunately, there's some disadvantage, too. All that military training has left her, how to say it, rigid, I suppose. Unlike the others, Iger isn't content to go with the flow. She wants lists, maps, timetables. She wants a hierarchy, and she wants it formalized. I don't think she realizes it, but giving what to... Giving her what she wants would destroy this team. Glory and Dietrich w would put up with it far more than a day or two. I know that I wouldn't, but she keeps on pushing, all the same. Monica shakes her head. One of these days, the situation is going to come to head. I just hope it doesn't happen soon. And that's it. Alright, let's get out of here and head to the job. So, Alright. Yeah, we gotta head uh, off to the U-Bond. But what a... Yeah. Right. Yep, head on and well, we gotta head to catch a train and go to a club and get partying. So, does Blackwire have what it takes to get into this party and find about about Green Wire? Is he into the new dance craze uh, in the local area or is he just an old curmudgeon? Find out next time in the next episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.